Ben Cook and welcome for Angling For You. Hello and welcome to Angling For You. And today you join me at Oaks Lakes. I'm Peggy Twenty Three. I'm Cedar. Um, and uh, we've got a little bit of a challenge, a little bit of a series going to go on. Uh, what I'm going to do is uh, fish a match. Um, obviously there's a match going on far on, but it's just going to be an episode of fishing a match sort of in the springtime. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to break the, the, this uh, series up into three episodes, which is going to be three different methods that I'm going to use. So it's going to be starting off with a method feeder to the far bank. I'm going to fish that for, for, for two hours. I'm going to fish a short line. I've got a feature to my right, so we're going to have a pull around there and see what kind of depths we've got. So we're going to fish a short line, which will probably be a 2 plus 2, and um, we're going to use that uh, with maggot, and then we're going to fish a margin line, and uh, fish that with uh, a mixture of micros and corn. So what I'm going to do is, uh, this first part of it is going to be method feeder, so obviously that's what you're watching right now. So what I'm going to do is, I'm going to talk to you uh, about how you would set that up. Right, so preparing pellets for um, your method feeder. Couldn't be any simpler really. Um, you can just get a normal bait tub to do this and it's just as, as good. Um, today I've got the, uh, the Preston um, soaking net. So all I'm gonna do, to, to be honest today, probably gonna need about two thirds of a bag of micro. So all I've done is put pour them into that net. So all you would do is just pour them into your water. People like their own additives. If you want to add an additive, add it to your water. So so they've got a bait tub of water and now what I'm just going to do obviously with this is just push them and let them soak. Now the key thing to uh, to pellets is for every millimetre of pellet is a minute. So two mil pellets, uh, two minutes and it's simple as uh, as that really. Once you've done that, take it out and give it a good drain and pour it through your landing net, micro uh, landing net, put a, a bait tub lid on and tip water out, take the, this out and, and shake it, whatever you want to do to get rid of that water and then what you need to do really is let it stand for about 20 minutes and um, this enables it to just finish sucking the moisture and come soft and fluffy if you leave them too long in the water they'll just turn into a mush and you know they won't they won't release from your feeder so i usually do it like i've done today is i've uh, not even set my gear up i've literally put my box on the peg and that's it um, we'll, we'll set this bit up first and then obviously i'll show you once we sat on the peg and we've got the, the, the you know the rod in hand uh, we'll talk through the rig and you get to have a look at that so best thing I can say is um, get this done first before you, you while you set before you set your, your box up that way this will you can take this out and it can be draining uh, while you set all the rest of your gear up so uh, join me on my box and we'll have a look at the setup right you join me on my box and uh, let's have a look at the setup so now the pellets they've they've had a nice not dry off but uh, they've absorbed now the the liquid and you know we've drained off the, the excess off we left them for that 20 20 25 minute stand time while we've just uh, set the, the you know the the box up and if you can see you just give them a squeeze and they hold together uh, which is exactly what you want and you just rub your fingers together and they, and they come to pieces into into individuals and that's exactly what you want in from your pellets so that's that done so they can stay in the side tray what i tend to do is have a guru box um, and I have the lid over and that just helps with it not drying out as much but what I've got today to go with that is um, some code red lava now I'm a big fan of these um, sort of additives and you know they're really good for just putting in top of uh, um, your, pe your pellet pot when you put it, put it on your pole they're good for mixing with the pellets they do bloody um, dye your hands so you must watch about them but what we're going to do is once we've used uh, the banjo mold which I'll show you again and we've put on uh, push that out we're going to put a little bit of this lava on just as an added uh, extra attraction now in regards to uh, hook baits um, obviously it's fi I've got fishery own pellets that's what your micros are there um, I've got fishery fours so a lot of uh, the fish in, in here are uh, of a medium to small stamp with the odd occasional decent fish. So it's more going to be F1s that you're going to be catching more than likely. So four mils usually perfect this time of year uh, for it. I've also got some um, six, uh, six mil ringers, chocolate orange is a standout bait. And you know that's just there for neutral buoyancy. And that again is a standout. Obviously maggots we've got for the short line, but also we can use those uh, for the hook as well. And corn, corn and pellets obviously been a big favourite, corn and pellets um, is what I'm going to 
attack the edge with later on, maybe put some dead reds on there, which we'll go into um, on part three. Um, but for part one today, um, it's going to be this method. So the chuck I've got really, I should say, is not really something that you should really use for the method. It, it's quite um, quite a short chuck. I, I, I know I could easily reach it with with pole, but for the sort of um, purpose of this video, and as a few people ask me about, um, you know, fishing that distance, I, I wanted to to go through that with you. So, going back onto that, um, what I'm going to show you first is is the rig, and we're not obviously going straight out. We're just going to go slightly to his left to just give us that little bit of distance um, to uh, enable me, me to, you know, get those uh, that cast in. Now. The, the feeder I've got is a Jura Banjo. Now it's a very, very light one. It's the lightest that they do. And um, it's a, it's the medium size, so I can get a little bit of bait out there because the weather is picking up a little bit and the feed, fish are feeding. So I do want to get a little bit of bait in there. So what I've got is, uh, I've got six inches of twizzled line. And, and, and as we all know, the twizzled line is there for that, that extra strength when abrasive moving against your um, your landing net ha head every, every two minutes. It, it just, gives you a bit of extra strength there and just is a, is a sort of buffer between the losing uh, fish on, from frayed line. So we've got that and that slides up to a feeder bead so it's a, it's a running sliding rig and that's what we have to use on, on, on most commercials nowadays. So it's completely in line uh, and that goes down to a, 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 chain, a quick change bead and I've got a 4 inch hook link on there with a size uh, 18's PR36 Preston hook um, and the hook link is 017 and the main line is uh, um, Daiwa Senza, Hyper Senza, uh, and that's uh, six pound, um, which is ample for in here. Um, and obviously, we've got that onto a little uh, band. Now, what I'm going to do bait band wise is uh, just uh, start off with a four mil pellet because, like I said before, you know, the average stamp of fish in here are, are small. Now, this is a cool little tool. A lot of people have seen it, a lot of people won't. I, I mean, I put the pellets on by hand without this tool, but just in the purpose, I've got it out. Uh, and what it is, is uh, a banding tool for, for pellets or, or boilers or whatever. So you stick that uh, the, the four prongs through the, uh, the loop, just on the tip of the prongs, and then just push um, the tool on the other end, and that opens up uh, the loop on there. Once you've opened up the loop, this allows you to to feed a pellet, get a bit better pellet than that one. This allows you to, to feed a pellet into there, and then you just let go of the tool and just pull. Keep all your fingers on that elastic and just pull, and then you end up with a pellet that's uh, banded like that, sat perfectly underneath the hook, and uh, ready for the fish to take. So to load it, couldn't be more simple. I'll run that through for you. We've clipped up, um, and the reason we clip up is it just hit that same spot every time. Great for distance control. So, what we're doing is we're just putting a very light sprinkling in the in the feeder to start off with, really light, just covering the bottom. And what we're going to do then is lay the pellet and the hook bait inside. And there's a slot on the end where we run the the uh, hook link line through, and just pour over. You can heap over as many pellets as you want because as soon as you uh, you push your banjo on it, it's going to uh, you're going to push all the excess off and what you're going to do is grab all of the black wings that they have on and just push you really can't to be honest push hard enough because the pellets once they hit the water will just all separate and just click the end and that leaves you with a perfectly loaded feeder so once you've loaded it this is your uh, your um, code red uh, is one, the one that i like it's more for attraction rather than uh, flavor if I'm honest, it's a brand new bottle this one, so I'm just going to give it a little bit of time to get out. There we go, so all I'm just doing is a, a couple of drops there, nothing special uh, on, on the top of it. And like I said before, I'll be mindful of getting it um, on your fingers because it will <laughs> stick to you really well. So what I'm going to do is just cast this out and we'll, we'll sink the line and we'll get back to you about where we're fishing. So when you're casting it out, don't 
whatever you do don't give yourself um, to a little line between the tip and where the actual feed is the reason is that is you won't get the swing the arc effect which will able to punch the bait out what you'll end up doing is rabble it around the top or you do a short cast or you punch it into the water and you won't get the you know the ideal um, sort of momentum so you just give it a little swing forward a little swing back and today it's just a gentle tuck and I've hit that clip and just want to sink the tip underneath the water couple of pulls that's it and all I want to do is just sink that line I'm just going to rest tip and an ideal is to get the the tip as low as you can to the water so what I'm going to do is just show you uh, where my uh, my rod is now actually getting better bites already uh, I'll show you where my rod is now um, I might have to just get up and move the camera for that um, and I'll show you where it should be because at the moment it's too high but I, can't, I'll, I don't know if you can get that in shot so I will change the camera angle and we'll uh, we'll see wh what it is now and where it should actually, be. Before I can get off I've got a bite and I'm into a fish so that was uh, obviously the um, that uh, bait just drew them straight in they uh, the, you know the code red now the importance of um, of doing this this is how I would set up on a on, on a match it's a nice little F1 so what I would do in a match is I would set this up so that I could fish the method for the first couple of hours an hour and a bit and that's what we're going to do today we'll break it up so what 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 we do is we'll get we get the um you get your feeder out there and the idea to get that to get in that method out there is to enable you to um I'll just lift this fish up and get him back because he's a that's a lively one you know so that's the kind of stamp of fish that we're, we're looking to catch and obviously you can see he's very lively so let's get him in the net so when I, whenever a fisher match, if I can, I try to get that uh, distance um, away from the peg. So, I mean, I could fish at, at 14 and a half metres today and fish up to the island, but because obviously it's, I've got a bit of space to my left, I've allowed me to do, to cast the feeder to the left. Now, I find that best. Um, so you're away from your swim so you can prime your other two swims to come in on later on and that's going to be the other two episodes so we'll focus on this so what I'm going to do is just jump off the peg I'm going to change this camera and go around uh, and lower this um, feeder and then I'm going to show you about right. so you can see from now that the rest is too high the tip is too high from the water so obviously we just need to, to, to change that so most of these um, rod rests now are fully adjustable and the ha the really the height you want is just touching the water or just above the water so just tighten that one up so best thing to do is put a bit of angle on it and then lift it out of the water so a little bit higher there we go so that's the kind of just find the uh, what, that's the kind of sort of angle you want so you can see it's very close it's easy for me to pick up it's not in anything in any way and you've got perfect angle to where you're fishing and perfect distance from the water which is really important so especially on these on the windier days what happens is you tend to um, miss some bites or some softer bites because of you know the wind or or if there's movement on the on the water and that's you know choppy and you can't see and your eyes start to focus I thing it's best to have it just to the water so when it's uh, nearly touching the water you can see that line tighten up and obviously the tip move so we've still got that pellet on just have a quick look at it it's fine is that pellet so again we we'll just repeat that same process we sprinkle that first layer in and just put a gentle bit of line through cover those with pellets and then just follow the shape of the mould put that uh, the banjo into the mould 
and again just push nice and hard as you've seen before it will push nice and hard and it came obviously the fish uh, when it's the water it, it explodes again so there you've got you've got the, uh, the banjo there go a bit with this code red like I said before you just want a little sort of swirl on there doesn't really matter it doesn't, it doesn't have to be anything fancy and then we're fishing slightly to his left as I say we've got the open space so we might as well t take advantage of it if you were fishing and you haven't got that space um, and you've obviously got the castability for distance then that's fine but if you was uh, I was doing the starting on the pole long pole I would start to the left and then work to my right I'd probably at this time of year try a bit of dobbing um, which is obviously a, a different method which we'll go into at some point so hit that clip sinking that line down and then just resting the feeder and it's ready to go it's a little a little touch of bend it's important that you don't you don't want a massive uh, hook bend in your uh, in your in your tip you need to be able to it for it to drop back that's of course but you don't need an absolutely ginormous bend in your tip it's just putting extra pressure and tautness on the line you just want it it wants to be taut but it doesn't want to be you know ridiculous you need to enable that fish to be able to pull that round without feeling too much resistance and by the time it's pulled it round and taken up then you know the fish is on right so it's been in there for about three minutes and has a, a couple of nudges so they are fish in the area so what i'm going to do is reel it in and just put another load out there keep that interest and that swim building I'm going to do is just have a little switch of baits. I'm just going to stick a couple of maggots uh, onto onto here. I've got a feeling because there is some good stamper skimmers and there's some good stamper vide in here as well. So a couple of uh, of maggots may uh, induce a, a bite as well. So we'll give that a try. This is the thing um, with all fishing and especially winter fishing. Um, you've just got to try about and work about these baits, you know. Try different different methods, different ways of doing it, different hook baits. You know, the, the ethos of, of the pellet and the method feeder, you know, it remains the same. But when it comes to um, baits, one bait can make all the difference. So it's it's good to to keep that them options open. So again, the most important once you you've just be accurate, be methodical. So get get that line sunk. Gently put your your down with a tiny little bit of bend on there. And then, as fishing is fishing, it's, it's all about having that patience. And there we go. It's, we've, we've changed that bait to uh, a maggot, and straight away that's gone off the rest. Like within 10 seconds of being in the water, it feels a little bit better stamp fish. We've get, got that rod nice and low, using the full bend in that rod for right down to the butt action of that bod, uh, of that rod. That's why we don't need heavy gear. We don't need. Uh, thick massive rods we we'll just use it utilizing that um, bend action all the way through from that that book section all the way through the rod and that cushions that first lunge that fish does so it's got to, to keep it away from this margin because he wants to go in there a bit now so just to steer him away from there trying to get in there Oh, it's a lovely fish. It's a lovely fish. We need to 
Definitely need to land this one because it's a lovely fish. So stand up, so just guide it, guide it away, away from uh, under the under the peg. It's right under my feet here, so. Lovely action on the rod. It's going hard from under my feet again. Fish is probably, I don't know, knocking on, knocking on for five pounds, I'd say. It certainly knows where it's going, that's for sure. So I'm putting up a fantastic fight. trying to get under that peg absolutely knows where it's going that's a very big fish absolutely fantastic fish oh, I've just about got it in there down. It's a phenomenal fish, is that? It's a bit bigger than five pound, <laughs> that is for sure. So, just release that line. It's have a little bit of tension. So that's easily a double, double figure fish. And the maggot's just uh, hooked inside the mouth. Attempt to uh, hold, this, hold this fish up for camera, but it's, it's, a, it's a big fish, that's for sure. So you can see, these are the kind of fish that the method can put and um, you know sort of pull out. Let's get him in the net. Now you see, the main thing, thing about that is, you know, that's the, a double figure fish and we're looking at, you know, sort of 12, well, to at least 10 pounds and we've, that, we've landed that on, you know, light line, light hook and, you know, a, a light rod and um, people fish for those, sort of, you know, with big, big, big rods. So, right, let's get that baited up. That little bit of change, a double maggot, obviously did the trick. Let's have another go. And now we're into another fish. That's took a lot longer uh, to come as that bite. So what we're going to do is, once we land this fish is and start, end this video. And then you have to join us next week for uh, episode two. And I'm going to start on this uh, second line. And you can watch that on part two. So let's get this fish in. So as you can see, uh, method, very, very dangerous um, on commercials, as we all know. Um, there's my, a, few, a few of my tips to, uh, to get you going. Um, hopefully it's been helpful to you. Now, uh, this is uh, the end of this video, but uh, if you go on to the next week's, there's gonna be episode two, which will be 
the short line version of the second half of this match, uh, which I'm going to going to fish, and hopefully we can add to uh, to that total. And then after that, this is going to be the third part of the match, which is going to be down the edge, and that'll be series uh, uh, third episode in this, th in this uh, mini series. So uh, you know, please give them a, a watch, give them a, a like, and a, a thumbs up, and uh, subscribe. Come join us on Angling for You on the on the Facebook group. There's lots of friendly other members there who can give you any advice you want, look for tips and and, and advice or anything. So, yep, that's from me. Thank you.